let's talk about abdominal pain that radiates to your back. Now, you have several situations. You have abdominal pain that's more on the right side or the left side or the center that can refer right into the back through here or it can come up through the left upper back here or the right upper back through here. So if it's going to the right side, usually that's going to be more liver uh, because there's a problem either in the gallbladder, the bile duct, or the liver. And it could be a gallstone. It could be sludge in here. It could be something that's obstructing the flow that's backing up, creating pressure, hitting a little nerve right underneath your diaphragm that's called the phrenic nerve that goes all the way to your neck. So if you press right here, you're going to feel it up here. And it can actually go up into the head through here. It could be a headache. It can actually cause a spasm on the right part of your neck and your trap and literally pull that vertebra to the right and pinch the nerve. And that can refer down to the right arm. And also when people are diagnosed with fibromyalgia, it's usually on the right side. It's really a problem with the gallbladder. But if you have pain in the center right through in here or to the left side, that could be the pancreas because the pancreas extends beyond the center, sometimes all the way over here. And that potentially could be something called pancreatitis. Now, the most common symptoms of pancreatitis is upper abdominal pain. We're talking about right in the center, right over your stomach area right here. The second one would be upper abdominal pain that radiates, okay? It could radiate around here or come up through here. Third one is upper abdominal pain that's worse after you eat because you're straining the pancreas. Nausea, tenderness, bloating. But you could also have nausea, tenderness, bloating, burping, belching if you have a problem over here as well. Now, a couple main causes of pancreatitis, which is inflammation of the pancreas, is alcohol, gallstones, or high calcium. High calcium is not very common. Alcohol could be common, but stones, having gallstones is a really big cause. But those gallstones could be lodged, not necessarily even over here in the gallbladder, but right in the pancreatic area right through in here. There's certain ducts that drain through here. And if you obstruct that, it's going to balloon out and distend and cause pain and bloating and pressure. Now, there's another cause of pancreatitis, which occurs 30% of the time and that is called idiopathic. They call it idiopathic pancreatitis. What does that mean? It means unknown cause. So they don't know what causes it. But I found an interesting article that is talking about the cause of idiopathic pancreatitis, the actual cause of unknown cause pancreatitis, which is very interesting. And they mentioned that 79% of the cause of the idiopathic pancreatitis, is something called biliary lithiasis or bile sludge. Now, what does that mean? This word means a very, very small gallstone that is not detected on ultrasound or a CAT scan. You would have to stick a scope in the bile duct and look with a certain machine to pick this up or it could be found when you're doing surgery, but it's a stone that's less than three millimeters, okay? So it's kind of like the, the forming gallstone. And what happens when these stones start to crystallize, they have calcium crystals, they can form sludge and obstruct these ducts. But it's very difficult to diagnose them sometimes. All you have is uh, nothing that shows up on a test other than a patient with bloating, that pain that might radiate to the back area. So if we combine the percentage of this with this, we can see that gallstones or gall sludge is a big factor with pancreatitis, not to mention with pain that goes to the right side as well through this area right here. So what is the solution? Well, you first have to understand what causes a gallstone or bile sludge. What causes it is a super concentration of cholesterol. And the mechanism of that is this. If you don't have enough bile to emulsify and break up that cholesterol and keep it thinned, it can actually form into a stone. 
So in reality, a stone, a small stone, bile sludge, is caused by a deficiency of bile. And this is why one of the big treatments that you would get for a stone or bile sludge would be oral purified bile salts. So you would take that as a supplement and that would help to thin the bile, break up the stones, and relieve the pressure. Uh, this is also very good for another condition called the sphincter of Adi syndrome. And really what that is, is that when the bile ducts and the pancreatic duct joins inside the small intestine, there's a little duct right here. So if there's a blockage right here, it's gonna create a lot of pressure. They call that the sphincter of Adi syndrome. Really, it's just the same thing. We have either a stone or sludge that's obstructing this uh, duct, which is a little tube, creating a lot of pain. Now, not only would you want to recommend purified bile salts, but you want to also make sure that you correct the cause of a bile deficiency. And here's some causes. Low-fat diet, because fat triggers the release of bile. So if you cut the fat down in the diet, you don't release the bile as well. A high-carb diet, especially if you're doing fructose or refined carbohydrates, can also deplete your bile reserve. This is why a diabetic has a higher risk of getting gallstones because of the high amount of blood sugars they have. If you have a decreased microbiome, let's say you had a series of antibiotics that destroyed your um, good bacteria, uh, you might have a deficiency in bile because your microbes also make bile. So you have the liver that makes bile and your microbes. So if you have liver damage, that can be one source of a bile deficiency. Or if you don't have enough microbes, that can be another source. And this leads to the next thing. A fatty liver can inhibit the production of bile. High amounts of estrogen, as in pregnancy, can alter the production of bile and limit it. Also, high cortisol can inhibit the production of bile. This comes from stress. It could also come from taking prednisone, which is a steroid, which is uh, usually for like a type of arthritis or an autoimmune disease. Now, the best diet to prevent this in the first place is healthy keto. I'll put a link down below if you're new to my channel. And especially intermittent fasting, because if you can actually not eat so frequently and let your system reset and let the bile concentrate by not eating so frequently, you can greatly help to avoid this problem in the first place. I put a link down below for those of you that are new to my channel. Thanks for watching. Before you go, if you have a question about a product or you're new to keto and you want to know how to begin keto or you're on keto and you need a debug because it's not going as smooth, I have a keto consultant standing by to help you. This is just for the people in the US. Hopefully in the future we'll be able to answer everyone's call. But I put the number down below so you can call and get some help.